So hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving problem 1.9 from Griffith's Introduction to Electrodynamics. Find the transformation matrix R that describes a rotation by 120 degrees about an axis from the origin through the point 1, 1, 1. The rotation is clockwise as you look down the axis toward the origin. So in order to solve this problem, I've drawn my coordinate axes, the x, y, z axis, and this dotted line represents the line from the origin to this point, 1, 1, 1, and continuing through that point. And what the question wants us to do is to get the rotation matrix R for 120 degree clockwise rotation about this axis. So I'll indicate this in this way, using that arrow. And this is quite hard to visualize on a 2D whiteboard, but we have to imagine looking down this line from through the point 111 towards the origin and imagine a rotation about that line. So let's pretend we're looking down that line now and see how the coordinate axes change. So here's my y-axis again. My z-axis would look like this and the x-axis from the point of view here, looking down, would look like this. Remembering we want clockwise rotations. So clockwise to here, clockwise to here, and clockwise to here. Now conveniently, all of these are 120 degrees. Because this point here must have angles around it that add up to 360. And when we're going through the point 1, 1, 1, we have symmetry of these three axes. So let's revisit this formula here, where we have a set of coordinates AX, AY and AZ transformed onto a new set of coordinates, AX bar, AY bar, and AZ bar. Now, I've drawn another set of coordinate axes just to show this effect of the rotation. So the Y axis is rotated onto the X axis. So this Y prime is equal to the X axis. The modified Y is now the X in the same way, the modified x is now the z-axis, and the modified z is now the y-axis. So using the picture we've got here of this coordinate axis, we can start to write down some relationships between this set of coordinates and this set of coordinates. For example, the modified z coordinate is just equal to the original y coordinate. So we have a z bar is simply equal to a y. The modified y coordinate is equal to the original x coordinate. So we have a y bar is equal to a x. Finally, the modified x-coordinate is equal to the original z-coordinate. So we have a x bar is equal to a z. So now finally, we can start to write down our rotation matrix R using the relationships we've got here. And a helpful way to do this is to think of the three-dimensional identity matrix, which I've written here. 
and use this to try and fill in our rows of R. So let me tell you what I mean. So the modified coordinate X is just the same as the original Z coordinate. So that means the first row, i.e. the modified X row of our rotation matrix, is just the third row of the identity matrix. 0, 0, 1, because of this. The second row, the modified Y coordinate, is the same as the original X coordinate, so it's just the first row of the identity matrix. 1, 0, 0, because of this. The third row, the modified Z coordinate, is the same as the original Y coordinate, so the second row of the identity matrix is our third row here, 0, 1, 0. So there it is. This rotation matrix, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, represents a 120 degree clockwise rotation about the line through the point 111 towards the origin.